Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 50. Don't say it. 50. Don't say it. Number 50. Chris Tierney? It's too soon. It's too soon. I miss you, Chris Tierney. So uh, this week's show is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to be talking so much about the things that are going on with sharks and uh, hockey in general because all that's over now. So episode 50 is going to be more of uh, a kind of a season wrap for the Fin Factor, if you wanted to kind of say a little sure. word there. Uh, we'll kind of do our our favorite, let's say our top 10 best openers that we liked okay. uh, from the season. And uh, we're going to go through what we said was right or what we said was wrong, <laughs> I guess, or what we when we were wrong. Yeah, yeah. So we'll call ourselves out. Sure. Well, I, I'm think I'm going to call myself out. We'll just uh, we'll just play the clips. Sure. But uh, either way, so there's that. Also, uh, we have an interviews playlist. If you haven't seen that yet, please do check that out. It's pretty awesome. And we have some of our favorite moments from those interviews that we're going to be playing for you guys as well. And uh, there's one other thing. Probably a bunch of outtakes. Yeah. From the season because there's plenty. The, there will be some outtakes. I'm sure. Uh, I'm not sure how much of those we'll actually see. So producer Jason might just jump in there and surprise us. So, yeah. Uh, not, we won't see these. We <laughs> so we'll be surprised. <laughs> We, we, watch we may show. have to record our surprised faces so he can throw it in at the right. end there. Yeah. So just, <gasps> anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that one uh, just a, kind of a, a fun opener, uh, kind of what we've been doing all season long. I don't know why we started it. It was just something that I, I started doing. Uh, I, I tried to explain it. I think in episode number five, uh, why I did that, and I honestly don't. I don't know. It was just something that I just started wanting to do, and I thought it was kind of fun. And I still don't know it, why you did it. It was, but so it was I, yeah, for me. It was like good to just kind of. Started off with, with me, kind yeah. Of. Started off with kind of a little bit of a joke, get us loose, and, and it just kind of snowballed, and and then yeah, kind of snowballed. It snowballed really bad. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's kind of what we've been doing for the beginning of every single episode. Most of the folks uh, who are watching us know that already. But uh, so here are a list of our uh, top ten, I guess, uh, as voted by nobody. I just threw a list <laughs> together, and um, so yeah, top ten uh, favorite show openers from season one. So uh, we'll roll the clips, and you go ahead and enjoy. Number 10. So, are uh, you ready to start the show? Ready. Okay. I'm just going to pull this out here real quick. Oh, God. It's the uh, broken Owen Nolan murderer. Number 9. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. Okay. Well, to everybody in last week's live who was telling me that we should get uh, Rick Nash. <laughs> <laughs> Number 8. Very good. Okay. So, you ready to start the show? Ready. Well, I think this episode's going to be pretty smitty. <laughs> yeah! Seven. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. All right. Well, guys, this is the last episode for us on the regular season. I want you to make some noise. Ah, ah, Paul, we love you. Ah, and you're so good looking. Ah. Number six. We got to sit down with legendary Sharks goaltender Evgeny Nabokov. We're here at SAP Center. They're doing a Hall of Fame induction ceremony, San Jose Sports Hall of Fame. And again, we got to sit down with them, ask some questions. It's a short interview, but I think you guys are really going to like it. So uh, stay tuned. You missed this one, Aaron. Number five. Okay, so you ready to start the show? Ready. Good. Okay. And um, oh, jeez, I'm sorry. I was up late at a Drake concert last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was wondering how long it would take to get to that one. <laughs> Number four. So uh, are you ready to start the show? I'm ready. Okay, can you, uh, Eric, Joe, can you get the useless uh, Fin Factor stuff off of the set? Yeah, okay. okay. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Number three. That's how you ready to start the show? Ready? Okay, actually, I, I can feel it in my throat. I just, I need to take a sip of this really uh, quick. No, don't touch the cup. What do you mean, don't touch the D cup? Don't touch the cup. Why can't I touch the cup? You're not allowed to I'm touch thirsty. the cup. I'm thirsty. I gotta touch. The producer said I can touch the cup. I'm touching the cup. Touch uh -huh. Nobody's, nobody's to stop me. It's gonna blow up on social media. <laughs> Number two. Also, Oscar award winning Randy Hahn is on the show. They score! Numero uno. Back to the Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 13. Mm -hmm. And it will be known as the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow because we just landed <laughs> Eric Colson! Colson! <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, a lot of uh, really fun show openers there. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys like them as much as I like making them up. So. I, I'm sure that number one is probably <laughs> our most popular. I think that's how a lot of people found our video in yeah. the first place. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, well, one of them in there was involving a player, uh, Rick Nash, who actually is no longer a player. And that's kind of kind of segue <laughs> into uh, our next little segment here, which is the kind of the uh, we were right we were wrong the I told you so's right yeah. and um, there was you know that one point in time where everybody wanted to get Rick Nash uh, because he wasn't signed myself included, you included I was hoping to get Rick Nash for cheap that, <laughs> yeah. that was my my hope Antoine Vermette was another guy that yeah. I was big on and yeah. both those guys ended up retiring <laughs> this season so that didn't happen obviously right so uh, there was the, for me again you saw it in the opener there that was kind of a, a glorious moment for me being able to tell everybody I told you so on that one so uh, we've got some other I told you so's um, a, a, a big one actually sure one that kept reoccurring on the show was uh, everyone wanted to trade for Sergei Bobrovsky mm -hmm. and I was against it and lo and behold, Bobrovsky finally won a playoff series in the first <laughs> round, but he lost in the second round. So Martin Jones uh, won twice as many series as he did this season, if you will. Okay. But uh, if you compare Bobrovsky, he another free agent, right? I, I, there's still people that want the Sharks to sign Bobrovsky and do something with Jones other than play on the Sharks. Right. So, um, <laughs> and for me, it would be like, well, I think there's a better goalie on the market, on the free agent market, um, than Bobrovsky, and that would be Robin Leonard. Sure. Um, he's a free agent as well, well, will be a free agent, and uh, Bobrovsky will be hitting the market at the same time. Now, if you look at their numbers, Bobrovsky was making $7.43 million last year, and Robin Leonard was making $1.5 million. So, Leonard's going to get paid, Yeah, yes. we, we know he'll get paid, but he's not getting Bobrovsky money. Right. right. Bobrovsky, I guess, has the bigger name. Sure. Like, literally, it's longer. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess that includes more money. But, um... It, <laughs> This look at the their goals against average is two point five three versus two point one three, mm -hmm. and the save percentage, which is a more telling stat, I think, is a nine one three versus a nine thirty. Right. So Leonard to me would be a much better value. I'm sure that he's probably going to sign for five six million dollars, sure. maybe around that range, about the same as Martin Jones, mm -hmm. and I would much rather have him over Bobrovsky. He's a little bit younger, yep, a little bit better stats. Um, he's gone through a lot with his life and gotten his career back on track, so it's good to see him have a fantastic year. And yeah. you had actually compared uh, Bobrovsky to Jones in terms of the save percentage. You're saying it was like just 1.4% save percentage better right. than Martin Jones, and look at the amount of money different between the two, right? right. So it makes more sense uh, to kind of take that 1.4% hit, if you will, uh, and, and pay a guy a little bit less, use that cap for you know other guys on the team, uh, to be as deep as we were this season, right? Yeah, so. and, and again, we've been going all season long saying that Martin Jones is not an elite goalie. Uh, he does turn it on in the playoffs, which we saw. Right. But um, I, just that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother <laughs> topic. I just wanted to bring that up right. as one of the players. Well, another guy who uh, was supposed to turn it on in the playoffs and didn't, uh, and it was a trade target that everybody thought was a trade target for the San Jose Sharks and uh, ultimately was not, was Wayne Simmons. Right, yeah. Wayne Simmons, man. That... Talk about crash and burn. We you talked, remember that? We talked about this. Yeah. Everyone was high on, on not everyone including us, right. we were not high on him, but a lot of fans were high on Wayne Simmons and wanted him to come to the Sharks. And he got traded to Nashville mm -hmm. from Philly. Yeah. Right? He was on Philly. And um, in 17 games he played with Nashville, he had a whopping one goal and two assists. Wow. And he played two playoff games with nothing to show for it. So, uh, crash and burn, huh, Mav? That was just a terrible yeah. acquisition for yeah. for Nashville. So, um, I'm glad the Sharks did not go for Wayne Simmons, and I hope they people don't want him on the team this summer. <laughs> I'm sure there will be some fans out there wanting him. So Something to be said for starting off with the team at the very beginning of the season, but yes, at the same time, we had talked about, we already have a Wayne Simmons on the team. His name is Timo Meyer. Mm -hmm. uh, they play a similar game, and Timo did pretty well this season. Yes. I'd rather have the young prospect uh, who plays a similar game and let him grow within the system than to trade somebody away, a good youthful talent for a guy like Wayne Simmons who ultimately didn't put up. Right. So it's, it is a shame. So there's another another one to knock up of, hey, we were right, kind <laughs> of, I guess. Okay, sure. I 
Yeah, no, I like that one. Yeah. So there was another one that, we, and actually we're going to launch to a clip, I believe, on this one here. Sure. Okay, yeah. this is, goes back to episode number one. Yes. <laughs> so I apologize ahead of time for the audio oh, because the, our microphones were a lot different than they are now. The audio was so bad. <laughs> we also didn't even have our swag. We had nothing. That's so true, yeah. It'll be funny to watch. I'm wearing my glasses and we yeah, have yeah. just playing black shirts and yeah, it was, yeah. it's a throwback. But uh, yeah, so uh, Ryan O'Reilly, right? Yep. Here it is, episode one. Episode number one. Uh, another guy that I think would be that could work is uh, O'Reilly out of Buffalo. Okay, he's their number one center. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's got a year left on his contract. I'm not sure. Okay, um, but he is possibly on the way out. That's the rumor. Okay. Okay. I think you can alternate him between the first and second line for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think he is a he's good on both ends of the ice. So uh, okay. he wins a lot of faceoffs. He is a good playmaker. Mm -hmm. Here we go, Ryan O'Reilly, a guy that I said would be a great uh, second option to Tavares, not signing with the Sharks, and he signed with St. Louis, who in episode two, we're not going to show the clip, but in episode two they said uh, it's great for St. Louis and they look scary deep up yeah. in the middle. Um, but Ryan O'Reilly ended up leading the team of St. Louis Blues with 77 points and ended up getting the Conn Smythe Trophy for yeah. the MVP of the playoffs uh, for the Stanley Cup winning St. Louis Blues. So Ryan O'Reilly was a great fantastic acquisition mm -hmm. by uh, the St. Louis Blues, and unfortunately the Sharks didn't get him. Now, th there's a lot that could have... This was before the trade for Carlson, and yeah, the team yeah. looked a lot different, yeah. so um, you can't really say, you know, we would have won the Cup had we gotten Ryan oh, O'Reilly, no, no. Yeah. but uh, I did target him as a potential player that could be a game changer, and he definitely was for St. Louis. Yeah, and you know, another guy, we're, we're not going to show clips on this one or anything, but uh, there was, uh, I would say Marcus Johansson was another one that I thought maybe would be a good uh, acquisition. Ends up going to Boston. Uh, Boston, wow, Boston. <laughs> uh, ends up going to Boston, and uh, you know, they, they went to the finals. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, another good acquisition there, a guy that, uh, you know, worked out well for his team, and someone that was kind of on our radar. Yep. So, uh, that was another good one. Right, so let's go through these clips now of stuff that we said would happen. Yeah, right? so not not just you know, player acquisition stuff, but just in general things that we had kind of pointed out, mm. um, and you know things looked one way. We kind of said eh, maybe it's a different way, and we happen to be right about. So uh, we'll go ahead and kind of pat ourselves on the back in the <laughs> next series of clips. So enjoy. So here we said that Anaheim was not going to be a very why, strong team, but, even though uh, Mike Johnson I, decided to think, say that they were going to win the division. Uh, for me, Anaheim, I don't see them as a strong team. Yeah. Kessler's probably not going to play right. this year. He's having, I think it's hip problems, okay. and he might have hip surgery and mm -hmm. be out. Um, he's not back yet, and that's a huge loss for yeah. defensively on their centers. Yeah. Um, John Gibson, their goalie, is a very good goalie, right? but he also, I think he gets hurt almost every season. He misses some games too. Here's where uh, I say that Vancouver is a pretender because at the time they were tied with Calgary for the division lead uh, early on the season. So you look at Vancouver, Vancouver right now, Pedersen is the is the um, amazing rookie yeah. up there. And he's missed, I think four or five games from a concussion. And Vancouver is just not the same team. When, once he came back, they were amazing. Um, I don't see Vancouver being a playoff team mainly because they have one guy and they also their goaltending is not great. Markstrom is not a <laughs> great goalie. He's a good he's a good serviceable goalie, but he should not be your your starting guy. Um, they have a guy in the wings that's going to come up right. in a couple of seasons, but he's not there yet. Um, I just don't see Vancouver maintaining the play, pace that they're at. Uh, they're going to regress and I think th they have a negative goal Differential, yeah, um, and that's just it's going to come back to bite you eventually. Here's where Aaron says that Calgary could win the division, yeah, and they ended up eventually. doing that. Um, Calgary, I can see, is a little bit better. They, I think, they have a little bit more depth. Yeah, um, they have Johnny Hockey, but <laughs> he's he, Johnny Gaudreau is not, you know, um, the only guy they have there. So uh, once they get their goaltending and, and defense, kind of like the Sharks yeah. in a way, get that figured out a little bit more solidified, they'll be better. Here's where we said Pavelski was going to get 60 points on the season, and he did end up getting 64 total. Now, Pavelski last season, he started the season off injured. Um, kind of like Thornton. Yeah. He started clicking a little after New Year's, sure. and then he was almost a point per player, too. He was one of the best players on the team. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's going to be going into the season healthy. 
and similar to Thornton, he's going to do well. I mean, I don't think he's going to be a point per game player. Right. I could see sixty points out of him. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think he can get to close to thirty goals, maybe twenty, twenty-five goals, okay. and then uh, a lot of those coming on the power play. Um, I think that would be an ideal season for him. Coming, maybe even flirting with close to seventy points. I think that'd be awesome. Sure. Here's where we thought that Brent Burns and Eric Carlson were both going to end the season with 60 to 70 points. And Burns ended up with 83. Carlson ended up with 45 and 53 games, which was the 70-point pace. Um, I'm still a believer that Carlson and Burns are going to get between 60 and 70 points. And now that there's only 76 games left mm -hmm. in the season, um, you're going to see them getting a handful of points in a game. Uh, here and there, they're going to have streaks going. They're going to get three, four, five games where they're going to score a point. Um, so a lot of people are worried about them. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of that is chemistry, which um, which we're kind of talking about tonight. Is yeah. it's going to take a while. It's going to they'll gel and they'll get better. Yeah. Um, but I'm not worried. I'm still not hitting the panic button. It's still a little too early. Yeah. And you know, in the same vein as uh, Eric Carlson, what we were talking about there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had been saying the dam is going to break, right? He was having such a horrible t first part of that season, the first quarter of the season, just nothing was going right for him. And we just kind of kept saying the dam's going to break. It's mm -hmm. going to break. When it does, there's going to be a flood of points. He had a 14-game point streak, right? 25 points in those 14 <laughs> games. And That's even insane. when he broke that streak, <laughs> shortly after that, he was accumulating more and more and more as well. Yeah. So when he was healthy, I mean, he was absolutely destroying out there. Yeah, and so was the team in general. Yeah. Like, ever since, I think it was that Montreal game, right, where they had a team meeting. Um, was it uh, after the Ottawa game? Right. I think it was before it was the Montreal the game. Yeah. In late November, early December, mm -hmm. uh, they went on a tear, and part of that was Carlson was finally gelling with the team. Mm -hmm. um, not to say who was the only reason, but that that win streak that they put together yeah. in in December was a good month, and then January was just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, like we said, I mean, that a lot of that offense, and this is the the debate that we had going back and forth between Carlson and Tavares, which mm -hmm. would be better for the team. And seeing Carlson clicking and everything, it helped the whole team because, again, he's on the blue line, and he's helping all four lines get their scoring done. So um, really an awesome job by Eric Carlson this season. And there's some rumors, which we'll get to maybe in Season 2 or the beginning of the next season, obviously. Right. And, uh, you know, him maybe re-signing with the San Jose Sharks. It sounds like it's a deal that's kind of in progress right now. Right. So we'll see, and we'll get back to you guys on that one. But, uh, you know, we kind of did the list, and we realized that all we did were things that we got right. So we're going to throw a couple things that we maybe got wrong. And uh, one of the things was, uh, with Eric Carlson specifically, how we were saying that it just wouldn't work out with him and Brent Burns. Um, also saying things like they just they're not very good defensively. But and that it turns was out that was before he got traded to the team. We'd say yeah. that he wouldn't. They would never do it because it just wouldn't work. Yeah. But then so thankfully we were wrong. Right. Yeah. But then defensively <laughs> we said defensively he was not a very good defensive defenseman. Right. And uh, and even then I think he's he's shown in the defensive zone that he's really good with his stick. Mm -hmm. um, when he does get the puck on his stick in the defensive zone, he's able to walk away from people uh, when his groin's not bothering him obviously. So, yeah. um, you know, again, a really good season by Eric Carlson in, in my opinion. But again, here are a couple of times where we got it wrong. Obviously not as long of a list because <laughs> we got more things right than we got wrong. So, uh, another one I would say <laughs> that I got wrong and I've been harping on them all season long, yeah. I think I'm getting a little pushback from people. It's the Bobrovsky thing. I was a little bit more stronger saying Bobrovsky was going to tank towards the end of the season, which he didn't. He ended up getting stronger, mm -hmm. I, I would say. And then they ended up sweeping uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, who was the hottest team, the best team in the league mm -hmm. all season long. So, um, yes, I was wrong on Bobrovsky <laughs> being awful. But, again, at the same time, they only got to the second round. So... More right than wrong? More <laughs> wrong than right? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you guys think. We'll enjoy those clips. Right. <laughs> okay, so here's way back in episode one where we said the so, uh, idea of having Eric Carlson on the team with Brent Burns just simply wouldn't Carlson work out. out. Now, I don't know if Carlson would be awesome. Imagine having Carlson and Burns on the back end. Two, yeah. two of the last three Norris Trophy winners. Yes. Absolutely crazy. But... I don't think it would work. <laughs> it would not work. I don't. I, no, I don't think. <laughs> they're both not known for their defensive prowess. Right, right. So you would have to split them up. You wouldn't be able to play them together other than the power play. Yeah. So you. Well, you'd split them on the power play though, wouldn't you? You'd put one you'd on think? one and two on the other one too. Ah, I'd over. I'd put them both on there. Okay. So how about your forwards? I think you make the second line 
second power play line yeah. with more forwards and one. Uh, I guess, yeah. You want Carlson and Burns out there. They're just going to... They would ruin teams. Are you kidding? Putting those two points on the point? I just think you want to spread the talent out. And then you have... If you have Joe Thornton on the top line, yeah. on the top power well, play, uh, yeah. he likes right-handed shots. True. And he's that... Pavelski, Burns, yeah. and Carlson. Right? Are you kidding me? Yeah, that would be pretty pretty lethal. And then yeah. throw Timo Meyer on there. He's just got just, just put him. Everybody's got a right hand shot. Uh, here's some of my thoughts on Bobrovsky and how he would probably tank towards the end of the season. You want a goalie that gets better at the end of the year, whereas Bobrovsky is the complete opposite. When he gets on and he he the year drags on, his stats start to go lower, and that's what's happening right now in Columbus. And in fact, he just got suspended a game last week from Columbus because he stormed off after getting pulled. He didn't right. go to the bench; he went straight to the locker room. <laughs> so uh, they they suspended him for one game, right. um, so he couldn't even suit up for them. And then um, so Bobrovsky is just not. <laughs> I don't. I never thought he was a good trade target to begin with. Um, I I would rather much rather have Jones over uh, Bobrovsky. If you look at their career playoff stats, it's yeah. night and day. So uh, Jones for me. He's the starter for the Sharks, and he should be. All right. Enough of us being wrong. I don't like those clips. Uh, so <laughs> uh, you know we've had a lot of really awesome interviews mm -hmm. over our first season. It was actually really surprising to be able to get those folks um, uh, here with us. Yeah. You know. Um, sitting down with us, being able to shake their hand and all mm -hmm. that. So it was just really cool uh, being able to do that. And we just want to show some clips from our favorite uh, bits of those interviews. Right, so here's kind of like a top list of them. And if you want to see the full interviews, we have an interview playlist on our website, on our YouTube channel. Yeah, there you right. go. <laughs> Eloquent. Go ahead and enjoy. <laughs> so this clip is actually our first interview. It's episode number 11 with Essen Gallo from the... Bay Area Hockey Repair. He's yeah. describing how his uh, skate guards are put together, and we just thought this was hilarious. Gotcha. The, this will keep it centered and held yeah, on the place. Yeah, it loops around the, the yeah. holder there. It's got a rayon felt in the middle, nice. and uh, it's got the chamois, the shamwow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really selling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be on TV. So what, you'd use that to like wipe your blade down then? Exactly, before nice. you put it on there, yeah. so... This is going back to episode 24 with Kevin Kurz. Um, we asked him if he was a fan of the Sharks. Yeah, no, I, I, fan's not the right word. Okay. I mean, look, when you see Joe Thornton scores 400th goal and it ties, it's, I mean, that's that's just right. cool, yeah, right? right? Like, yeah. that's great. And and uh, so, you know, and when it, no one wants to cover a team either. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. Sure. No one wants to yeah, cover a team. You don't, <laughs> don't want to watch a bad product for 82 games, right? Yeah. I mean, every beat writer would tell you that it's it's more enjoyable to cover a good team just just because you know you don't want to watch bad hockey for for you know I I feel bad for the for the writers that have to cover a rebuilding team like that's right. no fun right or if you're a baseball writer and your team's out by May it's like geez I got <laughs> yeah. 100 more games of this I got to do so and this is from our interview with Evgeny Nabokov episode number 23 uh, he talked about people chanting his name and how he still loves it. I, again, I read uh, an article today where you, you still hear people chanting your name. Nabby, yeah, Nabby, and yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. one of those things that still fills you with a good it's, feeling. It, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's hard to ignore. You know, yeah. it's hard to say, oh, no, I don't like it because it's, <laughs> it's really when you, when you were on the ice and you kind of you have chills going through, the, through your body. And uh, when it's still continued at times yeah. in here, it's just it's, it's very humbling, but it's, it's cool. This goes back to episode 22 of Dan Rizanowski and a uh, funny story about Arturs Urbe's um, English early on in his career. Way. <laughs> um, Ross or somebody in the media group said, what's better, uh, to be with the first place team in the International League or a last place team in the NHL? Mm. And Arturs Urbe, who didn't understand enough English to understand what the coach was talking about in Kansas City, said, it's better to be a pauper in a rich man's house. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin, of course, at that time, there's no internet, right? Yeah. They were getting all of the newspaper articles faxed to them. Mm -hmm. So the fax comes in, and Kevin reads it, and he reads this. And he said, we're going to have to have a little chat about how much English he doesn't know <laughs> and when he gets back here. Uh, this is also with Dan Rusinowski, episode number 22, again, where he shows us how to pronounce Jaden Halbgavox. Halbgavox. We still can't do it. Halbgavox. Yeah, I mean, that's right. All right, Jaden Hobblegawatts. <laughs> That's a great one. Jaden Hobblegawatts. Hobblegawatts. So it, it's a good one. He <laughs> plays for the Barracuda. It's yes. Halbgawatts. 
Hal- oh, with a V like sound. Halbgavats. Hal- yeah. Hal- it, Hal- it, it, it's Vox. it's a slightly altered pronunciation of the German, which would be closer to what you're saying. Halbgavachs oh. is probably. You got to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what the. You got to get the hairball out. When right. Okay. But he's Canadian. Okay. <laughs> Here's episode 43 with Mark Smith, and he has a pretty funny story of Scott Hannon from uh, when they first came to training camp. It's pretty cool, yeah. I can. My first year, I, I came into camp here with Scott Hannon. Uh, he was my roommate for the first time I came to town, which was, was pretty cool. And actually, I got a, a good story about that. Sure. Actually, if yeah. you guys want to hear that, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Uh, I, I wheeled in. We were staying at the Hilton at that time, so I wheeled in the hotel and. Uh, Checked in and I looked. I'm like, you know, who's my roommate? You know, and then checked out. I'm like, it's Scott Hannon. I'm like, he played in the West, right? I'm mm-hmm. like, he's probably a good guy. You nice. know, I was like, I never met him before. So I came up to the room and I, I came in and I introduced myself. Hi, you know, Mark Smith. You know, it's, oh, cool. You know, it's, come on in. So we're sitting there and I, for some reason, I opened a drawer and I, I don't know why because I never open drawers in a hotel, but I, <laughs> he had all his clothes folded out in the in the things. Yeah, uh-huh. his bags unpacked. And I turn around. I'm like. What do you think you're going to be here for a while? <laughs> and then, oh, he cracked up and had a good laugh about it. But uh, yeah, ever since then we've we've been pretty good pals. So. Nice. Uh, it's a pretty funny story, actually. It's yeah, I remember that. Here's Douglas Murray from episode number 44. He had a special message for our Swedish-speaking fans. Nu måste vi lära de här två grabbarna här att prata svenska. You gotta teach you guys some Swedish. Okay, right? uh, maybe you can just translate it because I can't say that. Yeah. Right, let him finish. <laughs> uh, men, uh, uppskattar att ni uh, följer Fin Factor och uh, San Jose Sharks. Uh, nu har de i alla fall fattat grejen att man behöver mer svenskar för att vinna. Uh, var ju, jag var ju i stort sett själv hela tiden när jag var här. Så det är dags för en uh, svensk Stanley Cup tillsammans med uh, San Jose Sharks. Perfect. Thanks. I, I heard a lot of words in there that I liked, like Stanley Cup and Sharks. So I thank you. I thank you. I think. Yeah, I heard Finn Factor too. So I yeah, thank you. I'm. I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was. I was just talking that Sharks have finally figured out you yeah. need more Swedes to yeah. win. Ah. That's true. So it's time for a Swedish Stanley Cup with the, together with the Sharks. <laughs> nice. I love it. Perfectly said. Also from episode 44 is Doug Wilson kind of chirping Douglas Murray. Uh, it's pretty funny. Things like that. Um, we just had Doug Murray on here. He was talking about a time where he was trying to measure his head, who has the biggest head between him and Scott Hannon, some other folks. They actually dunked their heads in water to do the displacement theory. It was awesome. I want to see how big the buckets were just uh, yeah. to fit over those two heads. <laughs> yes, a pretty big bucket. Rule of thumb, don't sit behind him in a movie. It's, yeah. like, an, it's like an eclipse. <laughs> This goes back to one of our favorite interviews with Randy Hahn, episode number 14. Uh, we asked him what his favorite web series was. Nice. And favorite new Sharks web series? Uh, I'm liking a lot with that, the, what are they called? The teal? No, it's the... No! It's the fin factor because they're fanatical about their web series. Nice. Yeah, so those interviews were just a ton of fun. It was so great being able to sit down with those guys, uh, you know, again, face-to-face, being right next to them, uh, shaking their hands and everything. Uh, I mean, I, when we first started this, I wouldn't have thought that we were going to be sitting down with these these folks right. and being yeah. able to chat with when them. When we first sat down to yeah. kind of create this show or, or get the ideas flowing, we were, we were thinking, like, what would we want to do? And, and I think one of the first things we said was to interview and also interview Doug Wilson would be, like, yeah. the top. And we got to do that, which is amazing. And we got to do it at the SAP Center <laughs> at an incredible part of the arena, yeah. which I think uh, they haven't really done a lot with that little space, but it was a really cool backdrop. Yeah. Uh, but a big thank you to the fans. We grew this show really fast, and uh, it's a big part to you, obviously. Um, we didn't think we would be growing this fast no. or this much this quickly. I Honestly, so, I thought we were going to hit like maybe 200 subscribers with about 100 of it being like friends and family. Right. Like people who already knew us, right? Yeah. But um, I mean, honestly, yeah, the Eric Carlson episode and then Randy Hahn, those two episodes really put us on the map. Mm-hmm. And um, I think the lives did really, really well. And people really enjoyed those. I think so. so. We built a pretty pretty cool community and and even with other fans that aren't Sharks fans that joined us a lot during the playoffs so um, a big thank you to you guys and uh, it's incredible and we're excited for season two and a great point there by Aaron uh, talking about the community we've heard that from the fans of the show saying you know I love the community you guys have built here well we're only the forum 
really you guys are the community so it's you guys building uh, building up yourselves which is great uh and we love it we're just happy to be able to facilitate that for you so uh we're looking forward to season number two mm. it's just gonna get underway probably in a, a few weeks we'll see when development camp and uh you know free agency and all that stuff hits right. so uh we'll be back for for season two with all of that right Right. Very good. So uh, what we're going to do now is we have a whole list of outtakes, apparently. <laughs> there are no outtakes, right? We get everything around on the first right. try. So. Which we don't know about either. <laughs> Producer Jason is going to be putting this together. Uh, and we haven't really seen these clips. I mean, we obviously we went through and did right. it, but over time we haven't watched any of these, so I have no idea what he's going to put together here. <laughs> so uh, here's here's a list yeah. of, I guess, a blooper reel. Yeah, we, we've we've lived these, but we it's not like we uh, went through and looking for the edits and whatnot. Only Super right. Producer Jason has all of the raw footage. We only see everything that's been edited out. So uh, we'll be seeing it for the first time uh, the, as <laughs> soon as you guys see it for the first time. So uh, we're already embarrassed. <laughs> and uh, we've, I know of a couple clips because they just happened uh, while recording <laughs> yeah. this show, but uh, there's got to be a ton of stuff from the previous episodes. There's probably more material bloopers than actual show. I th Likely the case. <laughs> so, uh, and there's our first blooper right there because we forgot to say a couple things before we signed off. Uh, first of all, we've got the jumbo puck that we've been saying that we're going to be giving away. It's the uh, puck that was signed by Joe Thornton. Again, thank you to Hero from the Sharks Reddit Discord for giving us the puck. I got it signed. I did say I was going to give it away. I'm keeping my promise, giving it away even though it is signed. <laughs> so um, to enter for a chance to win this, I want you to go to the URL that you will see down below on your screen there. Right here. And uh, you, you'll find out how to uh, enter and, and how to make entries and win. And I also announced the winner of our hats because we did an NHL bracket challenge. That's right. And the winner is already incorrect. That's, that's the name. <laughs> so I, I don't know who that is. You're going to have to write to us. And uh, we'll give you at least a full week. Otherwise, I'm going to have to give this to somebody else, maybe the second place person. So um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure that out. So send us an email at thefinfactor at gmail.com. Uh, if you are already incorrect and <laughs> show us your proof that that was your bracket. <laughs> if you're already incorrect, I love it. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Okay. That's the only person that picked the St. Louis Blues in the bracket challenge. There you go. So they got major points for it, obviously. Pretty amazing And beat stuff. everybody else. I ended up in ninth, by the way. And Paul, you ended up in 17th? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was a ways off. That's okay. I at least had Boston in the finals <laughs> against the Sharks, which was very close. It was close. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. In any case, now we will go ahead and roll the outtake clips. I'm sure he'll pick the best one. So uh, we do hope that you guys uh, enjoy those clips and that we hope that you've enjoyed uh, season one of The Fin Factor. We will be back for season two uh, not not too long. Yeah, so, pretty soon. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so I, I guess we'll we'll roll you out with those. But for uh, Super Producer Jason and Super Key Grip Joe, who's not here, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next season. Next season. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> My name is Paul. This huh. is Aaron. I'm sorry. Do you want to actually introduce name. yourself? Yeah. You said the same thing. I did the sorry. same thing. Say I'm We're going to do it again. Go ahead and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And I screwed up. And Twitter. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to the first. Please like, subscribe, and follow us on. I keep saying no. follow. No. Please like and subscribe us on YouTube so we don't have to beg you every time. <laughs> Oh, and turn on alerts, because we have no idea when we're doing the show. <laughs> and then we need to figure out how to say goodbye. <laughs> it's like a hashtag. <laughs> Share our episode with your friends. I think we should just constantly... Do also, leave us a comment of what you would... <laughs> Ten takes right here. Yeah, right here. Ten this, takes. This is the most it. takes right here. And if you want to support our show, please share your episode. If you enjoyed the video, <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. <laughs> I can't do this. Send it back to him. <laughs> Eat it up. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to the Fin Factor, episode number four. Four. Yep, made it there. So uh, that's a horrible beginning. Let's try <laughs> it again. Episode number four. Four. <laughs> This week, we'll be talking about contracts. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to start it off. The difference between a bigger guy has a little bit more meat on him, right. or a bigger frame or whatever, 
um, they can take the grinding and the pounding every night. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> sorry, that's just. <laughs> Yeah, I hate you. Yeah, right. No, I'm just kidding. No, this oh my god, he got that on record. Yeah, yeah. Too late. you can totally too cut late. that out. It's like almost a second. <laughs> We're doing this sober too, guys. Yeah. Did you imagine doing bad. like a drunk episode? Yeah. No, I can't. Whoa. Yes. I cannot. I will sponsor that somehow. <laughs> it's Ouch. the fin factor because they're fanatical about their websites. <laughs> nice. There you go. You have it. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> <laughs> Duh, now you're jumping all over the place on me. Green! Okay guys, so that's the end of episode number 15. Uh, right here live, uh, well we had some of it live actually yeah. from SAP Center. Uh, San Jose Sharks, Sharks Fest, Fan Fest. Let's start over. Holy <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Over here at Sharks Fan Fest. Yeah, let's, thank you. Let's uh, do that again. Let's do it again. <laughs> I did it live! <laughs> Alright, ready? No. Okay, so now let's talk about. <laughs> uh, thank you for tuning in and watching. And uh, anything you want to add? Thank you. You're looking at me like I'm trying to give you something. Like, no. No, I think it's a skunk. <laughs> really great people, and it was so much fun to be able to talk to all of them again in person, sitting down with them. So uh, just really fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was the kick over to me. When I'm staring at you and pausing, yeah, that's the kick over. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> it's too late now. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Ready? Go. <laughs> more, to add to the more to add to the reel. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.